Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, the circle of the earth, the circle of the earth. at a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and his circuit, and his circuit. There is nothing hid from the heat thereof. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. The universe has some peculiar properties, properties that couldn't be explained by conventional Big Bang theory. For example, it's flat, meaning it's at just the right mass density that it'll neither expand forever nor collapse back on itself. Why should it be flat? And completely opposite sides of the universe that haven't had time to interact are at the same temperature. How can this possibly be? It's flat. It's flat. Why should it be flat? How can this possibly be? 
Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass? But the whole universe is outside us. Look at the stars. Some of them are a million light years away. They are out of our reach forever. What are the stars? said O'Brien indifferently. They are bits of fire a few kilometers away. We could reach them if we wanted to, or we could blot them out. The Earth is the center of the universe. The sun and the stars go round it. The Earth is the center of the universe. The sun and the stars go round it. Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass and as a molten looking glass, glass, glass? three of them were seen in three years. They make Venus look dull when they light up the sky. Halos can be seen right before sprites and they occur in similar numbers. Researchers counted 5,434 elves at an altitude of 90 kilometers, typically over oceans. When many of them go off in the same area, they can increase electron density.
massive transfer of electric charge in the space between the cloud and the ionosphere. High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. It is a field of antennas on the ground in southeastern Alaska, so linked together as to work as one giant antenna. It's 360 antennas. Each can generate 10,000 watts, 3.6 million watts. But they're not broadcasting out, they're broadcasting up. When HARP is fired up, all those antennas shoot powerful radio waves into the ionosphere, the uppermost part of the atmosphere. They literally heat it. They create irregularities that allow the ionosphere to bounce powerful radio signals back to Earth. Officially, it's only in the research stage. Officially, that allow the ionosphere to bounce powerful radio signals back to Earth. Bounce powerful radio signals back to Earth. Bounce powerful radio signals back to Earth. In school, I was just like you, probably all of you there. I, I tried my best. I didn't always succeed, didn't always do well, but I, I, I put my best effort into school. Math and science were kind of my favorite subject. I didn't really like uh, English and in, in reading too much, but I've since grown out of that and I enjoy reading now. And I played a lot of sports. So, and all of that happened in a little town called York, Maine, across the United States from where we're talking to you right now across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Across the United States from where we're talking to you right now. Talking to you right now. Talking to you right now. The United States, the United States talking to you right now. Dr. Zeitman doesn't agree with us. He believes that humans will never travel in space. No matter what they tell you, man's inadequate body will never be able to leave the Earth. No matter what they tell you, no matter what they tell you. Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. Say go, no go. OTC, go.
and a solar bubble that's away from the helmet. It rolls around the helmet, speeds up, and expands as buoyant bubbles do. Party seeks power entirely for its own sake. We are not interested in the good of others. We are interested solely in power. Not wealth, or luxury, or long life, or happiness, only power. Water in his helmet? Yes, if there's enough water, he, he uh, certainly had that risk today, and that's why we took it so seriously. That's right. She, she said Luca second. Parmitano was in uh, danger of drowning in his spacesuit, orbiting 260 miles above planet Earth. An astronaut risked drowning inside his own helmet during a spacewalk yesterday, and today, they are digging deep into that suit to see what the problem was. We are the priests of power. The second thing for you to realize is that power is power over human beings, over the body, but above all, over the mind, over the mind, over the mind. Excuse me, Aunt Claude. Astronaut Luca Parmitano reported water inside his helmet, and NASA spacewalk officer Karina Eversley conceded excess water in a space helmet presents a real danger. The choking or drowning is definitely a possibility. Power over matter, external reality as you would call it, is not important. Already our control over matter is absolute. Italy's Luca Parmitano was in the first hour of what was supposed to be a six-hour walk outside the station when he began to feel something like water filling up in his suit. There's full motion mode where they can fully move around and that's faked in a plane and then there's suspended or extended mode where they're suspended by wires in front of a blue screen. They don't move around as much but they can make the scene last for a longer period of time. In this scene, Chris Hadfield bends down in order to adjust something, and you can see on the back of his shirt a couple of upticks on either side where you would expect wires to come in on either side of that harness. You know, Dan, NASA in its wildest imaginations never envisioned this scenario. An astronaut drowning in a spacesuit on a spacewalk 260 miles above planet Earth. But how can you control matter, he burst out. You don't even control the climate or the law of gravity. We control matter because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull. You will learn by degrees, Winston, there is nothing that we could not do. Invisibility, levitation, anything. I could float off this floor like a soap bubble if I wish to. I do not wish to, because the party does not wish it. You must get rid of those 19th century ideas about the laws of nature. We make the laws of nature. No matter what they tell you, Man's inadequate body will never be able to leave the Earth. No matter what they tell you, no matter what they tell you. But you do not! You are not even masters of this planet! Also notice that Chris Hadfield has the habit of bringing his knees up. That's because his stomach muscles aren't as strong. He doesn't have as much midriff strength as some of the others who are able to elongate their body and make the hoax look a bit more realistic. He's constantly bringing his knees up because he's not as strong as the others. Occasionally, though, the others bring their knees up too. NASA investigators said a close call at the space station last summer was the most serious incident ever during a spacewalk. It should have been prevented, they said. An Italian astronaut was in danger of drowning because of a leak in the cooling system of his spacesuit. Push me against the structure once again. Yes, and proceed this way. Yes, and proceed this way. 
Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano could have drowned when his helmet filled with water. Well, a potentially deadly situation forces one astronaut to cut his spacewalk by more than half a, by more than half after an equipment malfunction in outer space caused him to nearly drown inside of his own suit. It's an incredible story. Trace has more for it. get the ocean or when we predict an eclipse we often find it convenient to assume that the earth goes round the sun and that the stars are millions upon millions of kilometers away but what of it do you suppose it is beyond us to produce a dual system of astronomy the stars can be near or distant according as we need them do you suppose our mathematicians are unequal to that have you forgotten double think The real power, the power we have to fight for night and day, is not power over things, but over men. Power is in tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. Do you begin to see, then, what kind of world we are creating? God is power. Man's inadequate body will never be able to leave the earth. No matter what they tell you, no matter what they tell you. Said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. The whole universe is outside us. Look at the stars. Some of them are a million light years away. They are out of our reach forever. What are the stars? said O'Brien indifferently. They are bits of fire a few kilometers away. We could reach them if we wanted to, or we could blot them out. The earth is the center of the universe. The sun and the stars go round it. Newton's work has a beauty and a simplicity and an elegance that makes it the greatest work of science ever done. So who was the real Isaac Newton?
I mean, gravity, of course, is something that has, uh, well, many people have already thought about it. it. It's something that we see every day, and it's not like it's uh, not existent in our every life. But what I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually like to know where it comes from, an explanation. Uh, up to now, we have, uh, uh, well, descriptions. I mean, Newton, of course, is the, the one famous for, for first writing down a theory of gravity. But what Keynes found shattered his image of Isaac Newton. For in these manuscripts, Keynes discovered an Isaac Newton unknown to the rest of the world. An Isaac Newton who seemed obsessed with religion and devoted to the occult. And uh, he could describe why apples fall and, and why the moon goes around the earth using the same uh, basic equation for gravity. While his laws described the strength of gravity with great accuracy, Newton was harboring an embarrassing secret. He had no idea how gravity actually works. But how can you control matter, he burst out. You don't even control the climate or the law of gravity. But um, he described it. Uh, he had to assume that gravity was there, assume that gravity was there, assume that gravity was there. His private notebooks reveal that the same year he became a professor at Cambridge, he bought two furnaces, an assortment of chemicals, and a strange set of books. Isaac Newton had become an alchemist. Alchemy is an ancient and secret practice with roots in the Middle East. By carrying out lengthy and complex chemical procedures, alchemists tried to produce a magical substance called the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone was so potent that even a small quantity was said to perform miracles, curing ailments, conferring immortality, and transforming ordinary metals like lead into pure gold. Newton had a problem though. He didn't know why gravity worked, but he could calculate the gravitational force between objects. Essentially, Newton's theory of gravity is all about a magical force keeping the planets orbiting the sun and you on the ground. Here was a man who understood more than anyone alive about the physical sciences, indulging in magic. The Lucasian professor had become the sorcerer's apprentice. Newton thought ancient temples also held secrets only chosen people like himself could unravel. He is known today as a sort of a high priest of the age of reason. But how can you control matter, he burst out. You don't even control the climate or the law of gravity. He could no longer admit to his true religious beliefs. They became a part of his increasingly secret, private world. We control matter because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull. Newton was fascinated by the idea of matter changing its very nature. We control matter because we control the mind. He had no idea how gravity actually works. For nearly 250 years, scientists were content to look the other way when confronted with this mystery. But in the early 1900s, an unknown clerk working in the Swiss patent office would change all that. Thinking about moving in this curved space-time and how then objects are, are uh, well, making their, their orbits. And the reason they go around then in circles is that, um, that space and time itself is curved in the sense that things don't move in straight lines anymore, they, they, they go around. So that was his explanation, but he had to write down an uh, equation for it uh, which again assumed that gravity is there because he, he basically wrote down that, that the matter uh, curves uh, the space time. Which again assumed that gravity is there. Which again assumed that gravity is there. You must get rid of those 19th century ideas about the laws of nature. We make the laws of nature.
Isaac Newton had become an alchemist. We make the laws of nature. A high priest of the age of reason. Indulging in magic. Newton's theory of gravity is all about a magical force. Alchemists tried to produce a magical substance. There's no such thing as the force of gravity. Do we have proof that gravity actually exists? They propose that gravity is actually made of quantum particles, which they called gravitons. Anywhere there's gravity, there would be gravitons on Earth, in solar systems, and most importantly, in the minuscule, infant universe where quantum fluctuations of gravitons sprung up, bending pockets of this tiny space-time. But if gravitons are everywhere, why can't we see them? Unfortunately, a single graviton is too measly to detect, so we had no evidence of them. So we had no evidence of them. In physics, the graviton is a hypothetical, hypothetical, hypothetical elementary particle that mediates the force of gravitation in the framework of quantum field theory. If it exists, the graviton is expected to be massless and must be a spin-2 boson. Gravitons are the as yet undiscovered force carriers for gravity. If it exists, if it exists. A graviton particle is actually a theoretical particle. Nobody has ever seen it or measured it. General relativity says that gravitation is merely the, the actual bending and, and uh, twisting of space-time geometry caused by a massive body. In quantum mechanics, that means there must be a particle that the massive body emits that goes and tells space-time how to bend. It's called the graviton. And while we're sure it exists, sure it exists, sure it exists. If it exists. And we have a beautiful theory due to Einstein uh, of, of the classical theory of gravity. And, and I think it's really important to underscore that everything that we're talking about tonight could be utter nonsense. The standard particle model has yet to find any evidence of gravity. This is most concerning since gravity is used by most modern equations. Great particle accelerators have hunted for any signs of gravity. None found. Um, I hate to say this, but um, there's no such thing as the force of gravity. There are several ways to disprove gravity experimentally. Once, and there's actually been uh, experiments that have shown things that don't make sense if there is gravity. One simple experiment shows there is no gravity the helium balloon. It rises. Now is this possible? Classical mechanics shows that the force equals a constant of gravity multiplied by the mass of the object multiplied by the mass of the object 2 divided by the distance between the two masses raised by the second power. With this logic the mass of the earth is so great the helium balloon would have no choice but to be attracted to the earth. But is placed in a fluid, it displaces or pushes out of the way some of the fluid. This displaced fluid pushes back on the object. This is buoyant force. All objects in a fluid experience buoyant force. Even the concrete block on the bottom of the aquarium is experiencing a buoyant force, but the force is not strong enough to lift the block. The Greek philosopher and scientist Archimedes is credited with figuring this out. The science behind buoyant force is known as Archimedes' principle. This principle states, the buoyant force on a submerged object is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the object. This means that the denser a floating object is, the more water it will displace. An object with a density of 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter will float only partly submerged, while an object with a density of 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter will float almost completely submerged. We control matter because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull.
Apollo sat in launch control. We passed the six minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? historic telephone call ever made from the White House. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The heavens have become a part of man's world. The heavens have become a part of man's world. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. The angel of the bottomless pit, the angel of the bottomless pit. Do you begin to see then what kind of world we are creating? Which deceiveth the whole world. The crowning achievement of humankind. The greatest boast of the species. The event in human history most associated with pride in our own accomplishments. Landing on the moon. Twenty years later, and years behind schedule, the same space program couldn't put into Earth orbit a telescope with a lens that focused. And yet two decades earlier, a mission 100 times more complicated worked on its first occasion. He was cast out into the Earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In keeping a secret of the magnitude of the Apollo missions being fraudulently created, one turns to the Manhattan Project for comparison surreptitiously building the first nuclear bomb during the early to mid-1940s involved 129,500 people over a three-year period. Yet the secret did not get out. A quarter century later, the art and technology of espionage inevitably improved, narrowing dramatically the number of players in the know of a large clandestine operation. Which deceiveth the whole world, which deceiveth the whole world, 
Just one year before the first mission to the moon, NASA launched the Tetra satellite, specifically designed to simulate flight data coming from the moon, so that the ground crews could rehearse the landing, much as the astronauts did in their own simulations. Had it not supposedly fallen back to Earth, all that would have been needed during the actual flight would be a repeat of one of these computer programs, with a few original variations, transmitted to the satellite for rebroadcast to Houston. Scores of computers and their deceived operators on the ground would then receive prearranged information, including the alleged location, altitude and fuel consumption of the spacecraft, as if it were descending to the moon's surface. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The fact that the Apollo program was so departmentalized, with various construction and test sites around the country, meant that only a few people saw the whole picture. And for the first time ever, there was no independent press coverage of such an historical event. Whatever pictures and sound were distributed to the public was strictly controlled and previewed by the federal government. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In fact, in the more than 30 years since the event, aside from NASA's initial press conference and the occasional brief anniversary remarks where few questions were permitted, he has never given one on-camera interview to anyone. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea! For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When objects are lit solely by the sun, as all the scenes on the moon were said to be, after all, lighting equipment was not only impractical, it was unnecessary in bright sunlight, then all shadows, regardless of the landscape, will run parallel with one another and never intersect, as shown by this example. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? It is clear that these scenes were lit with artificial light. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, in addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hot spot like this, only an artificial light would. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Again, intersecting shadows and another hot spot. And again. And again. It is simply impossible for this picture to have been taken with sunlight on the moon with all power and signs and lying wonders, lying wonders. Here, a crosshair, which was burned directly into the image from the film plate, and thus should always appear on top of the objects in the photograph, appears behind the object in this scene, clearly revealing a composite of two pictures into one. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. And what about stars? On the moon, with no atmosphere, they must have been quite a sight to behold. Yet there is seldom any mention of them, if ever, by any of the astronauts on any of the missions. Undoubtedly, creating a mural with all the constellations properly placed in the sky would have been virtually impossible to create accurately, much less realistically. A competent amateur astronomer would have been able to call attention to the slightest error in measurement. The answer? not to talk about the stars, ever. In their post-flight press conference, it was the only question to which Neil Armstrong responded with an absence of memory. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Years later though, Michael Collins would remember seeing the elusive stars and wrote about them in Expeditions to the Moon. It seems his memory improved the older he got. 
And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, believe a lie. Then there's the flag, blowing in the wind, at least twice, on the atmosphereless moon. This rare clip, attained decades ago, was never re-released with the inevitable increase in experience and scrutiny. Lying wonders, lying wonders. It is clear from these rarely seen color television pictures that the crew of Apollo 11 brought a high resolution color video camera with them on their mission. Yet the only pictures broadcast live from the moon's surface were these from a low definition black and white camera. In fact, the networks complained because in addition to this, they were forced to shoot the images second generation off of a projection TV of the technology of 30 years ago and were not even allowed to take a direct feed, which further degraded the quality and clarity of the images. But they should believe a lie. We now realize that perhaps the reason Neil Armstrong has never given an on-camera interview is because he doesn't want to lie anymore that they should believe a lie. NASA's highest ranking official, James Webb, resigned without explanation just days before the first Apollo mission. Why, when he was on the threshold of achieving the greatest accomplishment of his career? All three Apollo 11 astronauts also resigned shortly after their return. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Arphaxad begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, for in his days was the earth divided. Name of one was Peleg, name of one was Peleg. was the earth divided, for in his days was the earth divided.
And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Thou, even thou art Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. 